Thank you. When I was seven years old, I knew that I was different. <coughs> it wasn't just because of my awesome haircut. <clears throat> I suppose every child feels unique, but I was the only one at school who ate kolache and knedliki. I was the only one who celebrated a name day. I was the only one who wore clothes that were sent to me by my grandparents in Czechoslovakia. I was the only one who made jokes about good soldier Sveik. <clears throat> I knew that I was different because of my father. Uh, he came from a family of coal miners and farmers. He was the first in his family to ever go to college. And he earned a master's degree in nuclear physics right about the time that the Soviets occupied his homeland. And he did, did not want to build weapons for the Russians, so he decided to take a different path. I knew that I was different because of my mother. She was the only computer teacher in the 1980s in our hometown at our local high school. And I got to watch her get so excited about all of these innovations and inventions, great things like laser disks, <clears throat> Osborne computers, HyperCard. I was the only one in our hometown who had an Apple II Plus computer that was such an early version that the Smithsonian actually asked for it as a donation. I was different. And yet, when I went to school, I was treated pretty much the same as all of the other children. We were sorted into grade levels by our birthday. We read the same books. We took the same tests. We came to school. We went home at the same time every day. I was different. And yet, I was not treated any differently. Some of my friends noticed these differences, but I often felt like my teachers didn't see them. And because they didn't see the differences, I felt like they didn't see me. And that was frustrating and confusing as a child. And I guess I should say, I wasn't really that different. We all have a story. We all have an identity. We're all unique. Uh, and we all want to belong. But I was very curious. I loved to read. I loved to learn. And some of my teachers noticed these things that inspired me. And I felt like they saw me as unique. And that inspired me. And so I became a teacher, like my mom. And now, <clears throat> I have the privilege of being the superintendent of the Vista Unified School District in northern San Diego. And our school district set out to be unique. When I started, we engaged our community in a process to establish our vision for the future. And what emerged was a bold proposition. Vista Unified will be the model of educational excellence and innovation. Very few school districts set out to innovate, and this was a big challenge. But when I talked to kids and when I talked to parents, when I talked to community members and staff members, what they said was they wanted personal learning. They wanted us to see every child as being unique, and we wanted to build a, a system of learning around each individual. And so we've embraced this concept of personal learning, but a lot of people uh, didn't understand what it meant. So we brought teams together, and for an entire year, we created a definition that could guide our efforts. And important in this model for personal learning is that the foundation is a student profile that includes a student's strengths, interests, and values. And we're still transitioning to this model, but we've seen some dramatic changes in our school district. We've seen massive reductions in discipline problems. We've seen students self-selecting into more challenging courses. We've seen a 50% increase in the percentage of our graduates that can apply directly to a Cal State University or a University of California. And yet, when we look at our graduation rate, it has been around 80%. And this is a number that's very consistent with statewide averages, national averages. And what it means is that one out of five students does not graduate from high school. One in five. This is a staggering number, something that keeps me awake at night. And when I've talked to our students and with our dropouts, what's really clear to me is that there's no lack of capacity in our students. There's a lack of connection. And there's a, a sense that school is not relevant. Why do I need to be here? How will this help me? One in five. And this is in spite of the work of so many good people trying to do good things every day, decades of school reform, efforts to improve our schools. So we don't have all the answers in VISTA, but we're seeing great promise with personal learning. This year, we implemented a personal learning academy at VISTA High School. And in just the first year, we've seen absenteeism drop by 
a 99% decrease in disciplinary incidents, and almost two-thirds of the students raised their grade point average by a full point or more. It's very impressive, very encouraging moving forward. And so I ask myself often why in our country that celebrates individuality and independence and innovation, why do our schools tend to treat children as if they're all the same? And the answer is that our schools were designed for the industrial age and they were seen as factories and students were to move through our schools uh, with assembly line efficiency. And in these assembly lines, just like in many of these factories, differences were seen as defects. Another analogy that comes to mind when I think about our school system is trains. So think about trains. They're a very efficient way of moving people, uh, but they also have a lot of limitations. They can only go where there are tracks, they have a preset schedule, they move at the rate that someone else decides. The experience of riding on a train is very passive. And yet our school systems often resemble that train experience for students. We tell them when to go, when to leave, we tell them how fast to go. So we've created this system where students are passengers on their journey moving forward. We had a forum with students about four years ago and there was a high school senior that said to me, I want something different for my education. I don't want education to happen to me, I wanna drive my learning. And so I think it's time for a different approach to schools, driving. It's much more active, it's energizing. You have choices, real choices about how you get somewhere, about when you go. Within certain limits, you can even choose your own speed, you can customize your vehicle. What would happen if our schools, like driving experiences, gave students real choices and real autonomy to decide when and how and where they're going to do? What would that look like? It would require us to be different in our approach. For one thing, we would have to get away from terms like tracking and saying students are on track or off track. We would have to think about a lot of pathways uh, for students. And we would need to think about new and different rules of the road we would need to think about how we provide real-time feedback, like a GPS for learning that could guide our efforts, but there's great potential there. As a new superintendent, I knew that asking the right questions would be critical for student success. And it's Margaret Wheatley who says we should ask two questions. The first is who cares? Who cares about kids? Who cares about education? Who cares about our future? It turns out that in VISTA, there are a lot of people who deeply care about these questions. And I suspect that the same is likely true in any community. And the second question is, what is possible here? When you bring people together that care and that are passionate, and you give them space for possibility and you ask questions, what is possible here? What if we brought people together and we asked them to redesign our system into one which celebrates the uniqueness of every one of our learners? I suspect that they would design a system in which students are no longer passengers. They would want students to be designers for the future. They would want students to be drivers. And the world has changed a lot around us. It's time for us now to think about how we want to impact our system of education to better prepare students for the future. And I believe it's critical to focus on what is unique and different about every student in order to do that. That's the way to embrace the diversity of our country. That's the way to build a brighter future moving forward. When my father left Czechoslovakia, he created new options by stepping out into a different path. How do we provide a range of options for every one of our students, especially the one in five that are disengaged? We don't have all the answers. We clearly don't have all the answers yet, but I'm very encouraged by personal learning and pathways. I see those as better options for our students. And there's an 11th grader in the Personal Learning Academy who said that when she used to come to school, she felt like she was asleep, and now she feels awake. She's alive, she's energized, she is engaged. So I ask you to join us on this journey. We're gonna need everybody's help as we seek to create a different approach to education, one that truly celebrates the strengths, interests, and values of every child, one that capitalizes on their unique potential. Now is the time to do it, and we need to do it together. So I hope you'll join us. Thank you so much.